so now we're going to begin the orthopedic examination of the shoulder joints. First of all, I'm going to inspect both of the patient's shoulders looking for symmetry, for the shape of the muscles and especially the contour of the deltoid over the sides of the shoulder. Also looking for signs of scars, sinuses or skin changes. And can I just ask you to turn around so I can have a look at your shoulders from the back as well? and no scars, sinuses, or skin changes here, and no swellings or deformities. All right, and just turn back to face me, please. So having completed inspection, I'm gonna move on to palpation. First of all, I'll palpate his trapezius and his deltoid muscles to assess for their bulk and make sure they're symmetrical. So just palpating trapezius here, and then round over deltoid. I'll then move on to a bony palpation, but just focusing on the left shoulder, which is where the patient's pathology is today. So first of all, I'll start with the sternoclavicular joints. I'm just using two fingers and only pushing on one area at a time so I know that if he experiences any discomfort, then that is where it is. I'm moving along the clavicle, up to the acromioclavicular joint, over the acromion, into the coracoid, and then around the glenohumeral joint. And then I'll just get, ask the patient to turn just to face the window and I'm going to palpate the spine of the scapula and then the borders of the scapula too for any deformity or pain there. But that's all fine. So next I'll get him to face me again and the next thing we'll go through is the normal shoulder movements. At this point you can ask the patient to put their top on again if they feel comfortable because they don't need to be fully exposed for the ex movement examination. So now we're going to move on to examining the normal movements of the shoulder. I'm going to get the patient to do it with both arms so we can compare the ranges on each side. So we're going to start with forward with flexion, otherwise known as forward elevation. So I'm going to ask him to bring his arms forward and as high up as high as he can. So this patient has a full range of flexion. Thank you. Just bring your arms back down. And now I'd like to get you to face the window, please, so that I can look at extension and keeping your arms straight. Can you just bring them backwards as far as you can? That's great. And that is a good range of um, extension of the shoulders. Now we're going to do abduction. At this point you can also be examining for a painful arc so you can ask the patient to let you know if it's uncomfortable at any point during this movement and ask the patient to bring their arms outwards away from their body and then as high up as that they can get them and see if they can touch their ears with their arms and this patient can and he hasn't experienced any painful um, stimuli during this process however if he had we could measure the degrees of which that had happened and that would indicate his painful arc. The next movement we're going to do is internal rotation. So I'll ask the patient to bend his arms, keeping his hands facing forward. And then I'd like him to um, bring his hands out to the sides and also all the way in. So that's internal and external rotation. You can also examine these by getting him to put his hands behind his back for internal rotation and behind his head for external rotation. And this patient has a full range of each. Those are the normal movements of the shoulder. Next, we'd like to examine the muscles of the rotator cuff individually. The first one we're going to examine is supraspinatus. This is examined using the empty beer can test. So I'll ask the patient to bring their arm forward. That's it. Imagine you're holding a beer can and then pour it down the sink. And at this point of the pouring, if the patient experiences pain or isn't able to perform this action, that indicates supraspinatus pathology. The next test we're going to do is looking at subscapularis and it's called the lift-off test. So I'll just ask the patient to face the window over there so we can see his back and put your palm at the small of your back, that's right. And now what I'm gonna do is resist your movement by placing my palm on yours and I'd like you to push against mine. That's the lift-off test, testing subscapularis. He has good strength and he's not experiencing pain, so that's negative for subscapularis pathology. The next test is for infraspinatus, and this is resisted external rotation. So I'm gonna get him to tuck his elbow into his side, bring his hand up, and I'm gonna show him the movement that I'd like him to do. So I'd like you to bring your arm out like that, okay? But I'm going to resist it. So I'll put my hand here, push against my hand, and that's resisted external rotation, testing it for infraspinatus pathology. The last muscle of the rotator cuff is teres minor. We can test this using the Hornblower's test, which is resisted external rotation in 
a, the shoulder flex position. So I'm going to get him to bring his arm right up. So abducted and flexed and with his elbow flexed to 90. I'm then going to ask him to raise his arm up, but against resistance. So can you push upwards for me? And I'm resisting that external rotation. He's not experiencing any pain. So the Hornblower's test is negative and Terry's mind appears fine. Those were the rotator cuff muscle tests. I'm now going to move on to some special tests. One to assess a chromioclavicular joint pathology is the scarf test. We're still looking at pathology in the left shoulder, so I'm going to ask him to place his left hand on the tip of his right shoulder. Sometimes people experience pain in the ACJ here just performing this movement. However, if they're not experiencing any pain, you can lift the elbow superiorly and that can exaggerate the movement. Um, if they do experience pain in the ACJ, that suggests ACJ impingement. The next two tests are for sho shoulder impingement more generally. The first one is the Hawkins-Kennedy test. What we do is we ask the patient to abduct their shoulder again, so bring it up and bend that elbow. And then this time we're going to be performing resisted internal rotation. So I'm going to ask him to bring his hand down towards the floor and I'm going to resist it. So he's pushing down on my hand. That's resisted internal rotation and they'd usually experience pain up there if they had any shoulder impingement, but that's negative in this patient. The last special test we're going to perform is also for shoulder impingement. This is the near test and it's slightly more sensitive. This involves the patient holding their arm out straight, but in, in full internal rotation. And I then ask the patient to bring their arm up forward, but resisted against my force. And if he's experiencing pain up there, that can indicate um, shoulder impingement. And that's the end of the special tests of the shoulder.